my career spanned a number of years through the 60s in New York in advertising. Uh, you know, one commercial after another. I mean, what I remember is my mom, you know, in school, a letter being passed to my teacher who gives it to me, and I'm out of the class at 1 o'clock, and everybody else is like, oh, come on! And, you know, and it's like, hey, you know, I got to go. I got, where do you go? I said, family business. But we were basically in Long Island all on our way into the city so that I can go to auditions. And I was signed to ad agencies at the time, so I was like doing back-to-back -back nationals. And um, landed a Broadway show. Well, actually, I worked with Mel Shabelson in Mixed Company. And uh, that got me seen and, and got me into a Broadway show called Thieves, uh, which at the time Herb Gardner had found out about me. And Herb brought me in. I auditioned a number of different times, got the role. Um, Michael Bennett was directing, you know, Michael at the time was just, he was an amazing person to work with. And we went on tour for a, a, a number of months, uh, New Haven, Boston, ended up in Broadway with a change of uh, Above the Line. So we picked up uh, Charles Grodin as the director, and Valerie Harper stepped out in the, of the lead, and Marlo Thomas stepped in. So we ran, you know, on, uh, the Broadhurst Theater for about a year, and then we moved to the Long Acre Theater, and at the time, they were about to do the movie Mixed Company. I mean, uh, the movie uh, Thieves. And, but Norman Lear had come and seen me and pulled me out to go read for Good Times. And I got down to final screen tests uh, with Bernadette Stannis, who actually played Thelma. And they, were gonna, they, and they said, OK, that's it. We got our people. I'm thinking, well, I'm leaving the show because I'm going to do this new TV show. And then ultimately, they, did, they uh, backed out of my deal, and they picked up Ralph Carter from the me nobody knows because he just had much more experience than me dealing with just live and all that. So I go back to Thieves, Norman calls Bud and tells him about me and Bud Yorkin comes to the show. And that's how it started because then this relationship with Bud began and uh, I went out and I did Grady and I started in the spinoff of Sanford and Son, Grady and we only lasted about 10 weeks. Him, you know, Bud, uh, uh, Bernie Arnstein, and, but, and uh, uh, Saul Turtletop. And so when the show was over, they approached me along with Whitman Mayo, who played Grady, and said, listen, we dig the energy you're kicking. And, you know, there's this other show. There's something we want you to go read for. You have to go back to New York. And I flew back to New York and went to this old theater where they were doing the $20,000 pyramid or something, $100,000 pyramid, one of the two. And a uh, room full of kids, people everywhere. And I'm going, oh, man. You know, I was like being, not, not that I was being hardy, but just like, oh man, I don't go to cattle calls. What's up with this? But it was perfect because Daniel Spencer was there reading as D. Mabel King was there reading as the role that Shirley, actually Shirley Hemphill did. And I was able to get up on stage and it, it was, uh, I was told that it was the pilot for, uh, the te television pilot for the series of Capuli High, the movie written by Eric Monti. Cooley High was like one of the cult films for me. I loved it. It's like watching The Big Chill. You know, it's like Cooley High. It's got the, you know, the Motown soundtrack and all. It's just a great film. Lawrence Hilton Jacobs. Lars Hilton Jacobs, man, you know? Uh, and um, so, uh, and Glenn Thurman, I mean, it, the, 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 the role that they wanted me to play, I knew it well. I mean, I think I maybe had seen this movie like the week prior. So I step in there, I'm like, oh, I got this. Because I know it so well.